In this video, we're going to take a look at uh, the endospore stain, and we'll need a couple of supplies as usual. Um, we need our um, glass slides, of course, Sharpie to make some labels, your slide retention device, um, your cultures, your loop, and today we're going to be using a um, boiling water bath along with our malachite green solution and our safranin stain right here. And the point to the water bath is to basically open up the spore coating so that our malachite green dye can get in there. And then when we go through this process of the endospore stain, we're going to decolorize and the malachite green color will come out easily from the body of the cells, but it'll be trapped in the spore coating. And again, because we're decolorizing our cells, we're going to counter stain with our basic dye grams. Um, safranin stain here so that the body of the cell will come out pink as we'll see hopefully later on. To start this process we'll do like we've done in um, our previous lab with the direct stain and um, the green is from cleaning out the beaker there that I got um, but we're just going to take a loopful of our um, water and come in here and make our smears in that loop full of water. So I have an unknown um, soil, and I'm just gonna cool this off by stabbing the side of the plate where there's no cells there. And I'll get a little bit of one of these colonies off of here. And again, you don't need very much. Just touch it to the edge of the colony rare, really there, and you'll get some of the um, newest cells. And I'm gonna just put this in the middle one there because that's my unknown. And then we will put two other bacteria onto this slide. And the one thing I will mention here is just because you are using a bacteria for an endospore stain does not mean they make endospores. Endospores are something that are made when the cells are in an adverse environment where they can go dormant and protect their DNA. So we don't always get spores. We have a few uh, types of bacteria that we use that are more reliable at making the spores. So just go ahead and go through that process and make your smear with um, your various cultures and in this case our unknown culture. So here's my last one, just a reminder, aseptic technique, um, sterile loop, flame the lip of your glass, flame it again, put the lid back on, and then we can go in and finish making our smear with the last of those cells. And so you can see the smear that we have here. Just light the one that I pulled off the plate. You can see a little chunk of that right there. But we're just going to let this sit for a few minutes so that the cells will have a chance to air dry. In part two of this video, we're going to take a look at the actual process of the endospore stain. And you, as you can see from this little uh, cartoon, we're going to be applying this malachite green stain that is our primary staining solution. And malachite green actually comes from malachite rocks um, that you might have seen in a rock or gem store. And it's just ground up and it has this greenish color to it from the copper that's in there. And we'll take this solution and apply some heat. And that will help to drive the malachite green stain into the spore coating that is surrounding the spore there. And then we can use water to decolorize the cell bodies that were stained with the green color there that comes out really easily. And then at the end, because the stell bodies are colorless as a result of the decolorizing, we will use another basic dye solution, saffron, in here to counter stain the cell bodies so that the bodies of the cells are visible. Um, and we can also determine whether or not the spores are inside or outside of the cells. So now that uh, the smears have dried up, I'm going to just pass them through the flame. One, two, three to do that heat fixing to hold them on there. And then we're gonna take them and put them over um, this boiling water bath to again, give it a little bit of heat here. And we will use a very high tech piece of equipment known as a cut up paper towel and place it right on top. And this is just gonna be there to help keep the um, stain from traveling too far off the slide there. 
and it's also going to hold it down on the surface like that. And so we'll let it sit here for a good five to ten minutes, and that will give a chance for the stain to actually penetrate into the spore coating for our spores. So you can see that our endospore stain is starting to dry out a little bit on top, so we apply a little bit more of that dye, and that paper towel again helps to keep it moist right there. And so we just want to keep adding that over this time period. And it's been about um, a little over five minutes at this point. So we want to make sure that we keep, keep, um, keep administering that dye to um, allow those cells to stain. At this point, it's probably enough to have two hits on there. So we're going to take this endospore stain slide and I'm going to move it over to my sink right here. And it's still pretty hot, but what I will do is get some water to moisten this a little bit. But we want to make sure that we get that dye off of there. And so you can see I'm wearing some gloves because this technique is notorious for getting green dye everywhere. So that wasn't enough, so now I am going to the stream of water here and hoping that I don't knock that off and now I am decolorizing this and we can just use water as our decolorizer which is really convenient for doing this process here and if we take a look at our slide we don't really see much of anything again lack of contrast in the background but we can come in now and do our counter staining. We've decolorized the cell bodies and spores will be retaining the dye if it got into the spore coating. So we're just gonna counter stain the cell bodies that were decolorized with the water using our Graham Safranin. Now that the counter stain has had a chance to work, we just need to rinse these guys off Try and hold it down so you don't make a mess like I'm doing here. And I always like to rinse off um, the top and the bottom of the slide to make sure I get everything that is there. And if you take a look, you can see a little bit of diffuse green material. Some of that does stick on the slide um, on the bottom where the screen was, but um, you can also see that my label there with the Sharpie stayed on. So I know where my stuff is and we'll be able to take a look at it on the microscope now once it has a chance to dry. There's our field of view when we're looking at um, the endospore stain with the 40x total magnification. And when we go up, And there you have it with 100 times total magnification. And I'm just going to go over and remember, since we're looking at our bacteria cells, we're going to add our drop of immersion oil by straddling the stage with your objectives there and just put your drop of immersion oil right over the center one and swing that objective so that it is touching the oil. And here we can see the results from one of our endospore stains, and you can see that nice sort of bluish green or cyan color. But the one thing that is lacking from scanning around here is the cell bodies. And here we can see a few of them. And when you see a field where the majority of the uh, specimens are lacking those cell bodies, what's gone on here is more than likely all of the cells that were in there actually went ahead and did this process of sporulation. So we can't really speculate about um, the cells from this particular specimen unless we can find a red cell body with this spore on the inside. And so I'm going to scan around and see if I can find. So I found a field with a few of them in here. 
and I'm sort of focusing past them to try and pull up some of that pink. But what we want to do is try and gauge where these endospores are relative to the cell body. And so we can definitely tell the shape of them. And over here, it looks like we can see a few of them inside the body of the cell there. And so that's what we want to look for, is to try and gauge the size of our cells and also the shape and the location of the endospores that are inside. The majority of what we see here, though, are exospores. But right there, we can sort of see some of the cell bodies right below the 50 there. So there are some endospores in there, but the majority of this specimen are exospores. On this specimen, it looks like the opposite problem is occurring. These guys look like uh, they did not make a lot of spores from scanning around. There's really only a few of them that appear to have the green. The majority of what we're seeing here is just the cell bodies that have picked up the counter stain from the end there with the saffron in. So we could measure these against the ruler and get some idea about the size of them. And you can sort of see there is a little bit of green in some of these, but not as distinct as I would like. I would like to see um, something that's sort of in between with the last one there. So maybe our unknown from the soil will allow us to see those. So here is our soil unknown, and you can see from this clump of cells that we do have some cells and we do have some spores. And then it's a matter of finding a good field where you can actually uh, measure both the size of the cell and also determine the location of the endospore within the body of the cell here. And so if we look at this one in the center here, sort of above the 50, there's a nice one. Looks like we can actually see some of the body of the cell. And you can also see the spore inside of the body of the cell there. And like I said, you can also see um, a lot of cells scattered throughout the field that don't have endospores and that's fine those would be your living cells not all cells are going to make spores even if they have the potential to do it they need some sort of triggers sometimes so there we can see some examples of our endospore stain